for a lot of us, we we've been hearing a lot of the the marketing um, things about the platform, but a lot of us really don't know what it is. So, um, Randy, you you might help me through some of this as well. This this is kind of fun stuff. Randy really appreciates vinyl and eight tracks and everything. Um, he he still does the streaming service. Also, avoiding the the post office like the plague, we we still use email. And going through our files on a regular basis to clean up our hard drives through Windows Explorer and our service. Well, many times now we're going to Dropbox and Google Drive and and, and OneDrive from Microsoft. But at the end of the day, um, I've stopped sending pictures to my mother via via envelopes, and I just send them directly to a digital picture frame on a digital camera. Now, what's what's interesting about all that is all those new things that we're doing are on a cloud. But for SolidWorks and the 3D Experience platform, what does a cloud mean to us? Well, this is actually locations of the cloud, quote unquote, the cloud for SolidWorks on AWS servers all across the world. So now, Randy, if you've got anything to throw in on this slide, feel free to. But I mean, these are the big reasons why we see people going to the cloud. I mean, upgrading servers, replacing servers, um, IT, um, security, um, COVID. I mean, being able to not worry about VPN, VPNing into our office or VPNing into a computer to get data. Sometimes that doesn't quite work. So having that data readily on the cloud is usually a good thing. Platform, I'm, I'm doing air quotes right now. Platforms are lots of different things. Like, like I was mentioning, the last couple of days have been Amazon Prime Day. Um, Prime is a platform. Um, YouTube is a platform. Facebook is a platform. Now, the, the big thing about all of these different tools are they run inside of a web browser. So for SOLIDWORKS, the 3D experience platform allows us to get our data up to a secure cloud-based system where it's in a web-based ecosystem. We can collaborate with other members of our team through a social tool called 3D Swim. We can work on our projects through a tool called Project Planner that allows us to assign tasks and assign files and that sort of thing. You can use it from any device. We have customers that are using the platform and designing parts on an iPad, an iPad Pro. Once that data is on the platform, there's lots of different things we can do with it. One of those is simulation. Just like Ford has Lincoln and Mercury, well, the SO Systems has SOLIDWORKS, it has Simulia, it has Inovia, it has Gatia, Delmia. There's lots of different brands. So we're able to leverage that power. Like I said, it's integrated in the cloud, but also integrates into your desktop solution you currently have. So we can leverage that SOLIDWORKS ecosystem in the cloud. I wanted to go through and talk. We, we mentioned that there's all these different things you can do on the platform. I'm not asking any of you to look at this and understand anything on the screen, okay? But these are the different quote unquote roles that can be purchased on the SOLIDWORKS side of things for the 3D experience platform. Meaning there's just not SOLIDWORKS things that you can do. There's machining, there's simulation. There's a bunch of different things that you can do with this. Feel free to ask us what you want to do. And there's probably something out there for us to leverage. Okay. So take that a step further here. Distill it down to things that we're focusing on currently. Um, you can see we've got data management and PLM. We've got design tools. We've got simulation. We've got marketing and rendering. But for the most part, they are all based upon these base roles here. And we'll talk about what roles are here in a second. But these are things that we'd like to talk to you about. If you see any of these things on this list, you're like, wow, I want to know about that. My email address is really simple. It's Bob M, B-O-B-M as a Michael at CHI.com. 
I will be happy to talk with you and the rest of our team about any of these things that are on the screen right now. With that being said, I mentioned earlier that we can leverage all these different brands on the platform. Okay, so lots of different things there. One of the things we're not talking about today, but I want you to know is there is 3D Creator. 3D Creator is a parametric modeling tool available for you to work inside of a web browser. It is not SOLIDWORKS in the cloud, okay? It is a completely different tool that does parametrics, it does assemblies, it does surfacing. It's for those people that do not have SOLIDWORKS but need to work very quickly and create files. But we can also send those files back to SOLIDWORKS. 3D Sculptor. It's subdivision modeling on the, on the platform. You see right there, I'm grabbing a cage of a model and just squashing and stretching and pushing and pulling digital clay on screen, okay? That's all available inside of a web browser. This one I threw in because I think this one's really stinking cool. Um, 3D Pattern Shape Creator is a role that we have available that allows us to bring a three-dimensional model in and apply geometries that would take us weeks and weeks to do inside of a normal parametric tool. With a few clicks, it parametrically updates and applies some amazing results. So if you ever heard of Voronir patterns or you've ever seen those beautiful architectural shapes that you're like, how the heck did they figure out how to do the glass panels at all the different angles? Tools like this help you achieve that goal. 3D Render. 3D Render is a free, actually a free tool that you can get on the platform. The only thing it's going to cost you is hitting the render button and getting your final images. These are relatively inexpensive to do, but a, another way of leveraging your models that you have on the platform very easily. We're using a rendering engine called Stella. Stella is the rendering engine that... Uh, BMW, Tesla, a bunch of those car companies use to get their final renders. And we're using that one here. So a few things on the Sour Sim side of things with Simulia. If you're familiar with the Sour Premium simulation, simulation professional and simulation standard, you can see above those is where those other Simulia tools stack up. So once we get into tools like structural mechanical engineer, we get into very elaborate drop testing, impacts, materials that go way beyond their yield strength and their elongation properties, and even do material um, calibrations with that. So feel free to ask questions on any of those tools. Shoot me an email and I'll be happy to talk about them. So meat and potatoes. What is 3D sheet metal creator? First of all, it is what we call a role, okay? So when you're dealing with the platform, you are buying roles. And those roles are basically something that you need to get done as your day-to-day -day role in your company. It could be design, it could be freeform surfacing, it could be project management, whatever it is, you buy that role and it includes the apps that you need to get that particular task done. So a 3D sheet metal creator, you get X sheet metal. X sheet metal is an app on the platform. You get the SOLIDWORKS connector and you get the uh, drive format converter. So X sheet metal, we're gonna see that in a little bit. The SOLIDWORKS connector here adds a interface in the task pane of SOLIDWORKS for you to be able to come in and search the platform for data, check files from SOLIDWORKS into the platform and pull data down from the platform. It's all pulling it from the cloud. So you can come in and you can do previews, you can open the files. Here I opened up a Lego assembly that I checked in from another machine in, in my office, but I pulled it down from home. You can see all the status, just like you would in a standard PDM system right there. And the reason why this is part of that role is we need to manage the data. So that's what that's there for. 
the Derive component creator is there to help you out with getting the data up to the platform as well. So with 3D Sheet Metal Creator, is there anything else that I need to get my job done? Well, there's two other roles that you have to have. One of those is Collaborative Business Innovator. Collaborative Business Innovator is the base role for everyone who needs to connect to the platform. That gives us the ability to communicate with other people on the platform, create dashboards, and view, pan, rotate, um, markup three-dimensional files that are up on the platform as well. Then we've got the Collaborative Industry Innovator. That is your data management tool. So let's, let's take a look at what's included in some of these. Like I said, Collaborative Business Innovator is a role. It includes apps. Now, Collaborative Business Innovator, I believe, has 18 apps in it, but these are primarily the eight that I use in there. So you'll be able to create dashboards, do searches for files on the platform. You'd be able to do three-dimensional markups, explodes, and that sort of thing. Um, with the my, my 3D experience, that talks about all the roles that you have available to you and the training that's also available, which is really nice. It concatenates it down to one spot. 3D Swim gives me the ability to have, and Randy, please don't get mad at me for saying this, a Facebook for designers. Um, Randy can build a model and say, I really like this model. I want to share this with everybody in the team. He right clicks inside of SolidWorks and said, post to swim. A screenshot or a 3D representation of that model appears for everyone else to comment on, which is really nice. Um, 3D Sketch gives you the ability to quickly on any device form out just with kind of a cocktail napkin sketch, but a three dimensional cocktail napkin sketch of what you want a model to look like. And there's some really fun tools there. 3D Drive gives you the ability to sync files from your machine up to the platform that are non solid related and you don't need revision control with those. So let's take a look. The next thing here, Collaborative Industry Innovator. This gives you quite a bit of power. 3D markup, um, sound, just what it sounds like. You can come in and do markups and things on those three-dimensional models. Bookmark Editor. Um, when I'm working on a project, there are certain files I always want to get to very quickly. I can create a bookmark of that and get to that file. Change action, very nice. I can be inside of a 3D markup or a 3D play, and I can say, you know, I need to execute a change action on this file, and it will start a change action. Okay. Collabor collaboration for Microsoft gives me the ability inside of Word, Excel, PowerPoint, to have the same style of integration that I would in the SOLIDWORKS task pane inside of Microsoft Word, Excel, or PowerPoint. It also gives you the integration into um, Outlook. So if you have tasks that you need to get done as part of a change action or an issue management, those appear in your tasks inside of Outlook. Um, Lifecycle management, just what it sounds like. You, you're able to send those files through the next step of their life um, by doing revisions and that sort of thing. Compare, straight up being able to compare files side by side, see volumetric differences, that sort of thing. So that comes in pretty handy. Issue management, issue management can be, you can have as many issues as you want on a file and those can dovetail in right into your change actions. So just trying to give you a quick 5,000 foot overview of some of the things that you will see before we even get into sheet metal. Those are things that will be available to you when you have 3D Sheet Metal Creator that includes the X Sheet Metal app. So the question is, who's, who the heck is this for? Well, it's for designers, sheet metal designers, enclosures, packaging designers. A lot of us that are on the call have SOLIDWORKS and I'm definitely not here to replace SOLIDWORKS. I love that tool. I've been using it for 20 years myself. So this is for the people on the shop floor that need to create a fixture or something really quick. And you don't want to have them running a seat of SOLIDWORKS. You can give them this and very quickly they can open up on their phone, an iPad, a web browser, 
and be able to model something inside of that tool and then be able to deliver that back to SolidWorks so they can use it in a design. So let's go ahead and hop in here real quick. I'm gonna make sure that this doesn't go south on me here. So get out of my WebEx here. So this was an assembly that I had inside of SolidWorks and X basically threw it up to the platform via the SolidWorks connector and opened it up here. So simply just did that by going into my essentials and said, open the file, or I can say import. So now I've got a, an assembly structure that we're all familiar with. Let's kind of go through the user interface here. So what we see on screen is a dashboard. I can click on this little hamburger icon here and shows me quite a few dashboards that I am a part of. Randy's not going to be happy with me <laughs> when he sees this many dashboards, but you can have as many dashboards as you want. I even have one that says don't run with scissors. I don't know why I have one that says don't run with scissors, but it's there. But when you get the, the 3D sheet metal creator, by default, you get this dashboard copied to your account. And that dashboard has tabs, okay? If I click through the tabs, it's gonna show me various types of content. So this one's giving me access to my files in my secure locations, is giving me some information about what are collaborative spaces via web page reader. I can come over here and look at my communities. So if I look here, these are posts that people have made and have threaded conversations and ideas. If I come over here, tips and tricks. So it's showing me some, some stuff. I captured some images and threw those up there. But the way this works, you come in, you hit the icon for a new tab, and then I can grab any one of my roles and simply drag and drop a app onto that dashboard here, X design. I just grab that one. And I can make that smaller or larger. I can make that go full screen here, give it a second to load up, and we'll have that available to us. I have my X sheet metal app available here. So I'm going to go ahead and start modeling sheet metal part in this assembly. What I'm going to do is build a sheet metal enclosure around this part. Now, this is going to look and feel a lot like SOLIDWORKS. So the user interface over here, you can see I have the phys what we call physical products on the platform. Inside of SOLIDWORKS, you would call them parts or assemblies. Um, down here, just like we have the command manager inside of SOLIDWORKS, we have the ribbons down here. So if I want to say this icons, I want that on all the time. I can simply double click on that tab. And when I go to another tab, you can see that whole toolbar is available to me. I don't need it right now, so I'm gonna double click, get that out of the way, come over to my sketch, and we'll zoom in on this face. And I'm gonna, just like I would inside a software, you can see I get a context sensitive toolbar, click on that, zoom out a little bit there, and we're gonna start by just pulling out the beginning of our box, horizontal vertical line, and by just clicking on the line, I get the context sensitive toolbar. I also get the ability to add a dimension, spot on by just typing in a dimension here. So I'm gonna type in, let's go with 350, and I'll grab this line down here, and we'll make that 400. Okay, pretty straightforward. Click on the line again inside the sketch, I can get access to an extrusion. That same command is right on the sheet metal toolbar right here, extrude your open sketch. So multiple ways to skin the cat. So go ahead and start my extrusion here. So just like we would be familiar with here, I'm always gonna get a preview. The first thing it wants to know is what sketch am I using for this feature? And I can tell it when I flatten it, what entity is gonna be my fixed face right there? If I zoom in, I can tell it, do I want this to be material to the top, material to the middle, material to the bottom? So I'm gonna to go to the top outside here 
and we'll go with a distance. Let's I like that they just call this extrusion rather than base flange or flange. Some weird sheet metal name because that's what I want. I want to do an extrusion. Yes, of course I'm doing sheet metal. Yeah, exactly. So here, if I go ahead and hit OK to that, you can see I've got that part. Now, one of the things I didn't do, I kind of blazed over it, but double click here, I've got my sheet metal parameters. So what's your thickness? What's your default bend radius, your K factor? Am I doing a relief? So you can come in and say what the width of that relief is and what the depth is. There's quite a few options here. We can do flat jointed, close, max, tears, linears. A couple of things I really like about this is it really does respond like I do want to make press break sheet metal components, which is really nice. Here, I'm going to come in and grab an edge flange off of this. Now, we call this a wall off of an edge. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. So I will use some SOLIDWORKS terminology there as I go. You can come in and say, do I want to do this from a sketch or an edge? I'm going to start out with an edge here. And we'll say oh, 185 sounds like a number. Grab the other side there. You can see I get a preview of that. If you look at this from the top, you can see where that material is going to there. So we can say, how am I going to measure that inner, outer, extrapolated from a virtual sharp? Um, I can also put in clearances. So the clearances are, how are they overlapping with their neighbor? So I'm going to do a monodirectional overlap, and we'll go with six millimeters out. And when I get out of the clearance, you can see that backs off. So that looks pretty good. I'll go ahead and green check that. Now, just like anything else, I can double click on the face. It takes me back into the feature. If, if you don't like the features kind of floating out here, you can always just grab a hold of those and move those around and dock them. So I dock that right with my features or just pull that off. Depending on how much real estate you have, sometimes you want to dock it, sometimes not. So now I want to pull a tab off to go into this area. So I'm going to pull another wall off of an edge. And let's look at that from the top again here. So you can see where I'm at. That looks pretty good. You can even see it does the, the relief for me there. Looks, looks nice. Um, I don't need that to go the full length. So I'm going to come into my limiting geometry. We call that an offset inside of SOLIDWORKS. I can grab a hold of this, drag this down. Uh, let's see. Let's go with 165 there, maybe 175. Just give it a little, little bit of overlap there. I can also do that from the bottom as well if I needed. Um, here, I'm just going to go with zero. Come back in if I need to. Let's go ahead and hit the green check there. So now I forgot to do the other side, so I just double click. Add this one in. It knows the offset for both sides. If we look at this, I really wanted those to be pretty doggone close to each other, which I didn't quite achieve. So how do we do that? So we'll come over, grab our tools, and I'm going to grab my measurement tool. And I'm going to measure from that face to that face there. And it says I'm at four millimeters. OK, four millimeters. I can, I can adjust that. So let's go back in. Go to my clearances. I'm going to do a mono direction. And, and Randy, um, I'm about to do something I'm not supposed to do. What, what, what's happening? Uh, what's happening? Numbers. Look, look at that <laughs> numbers things. Look at that flange. Oh, 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 yeah. Isn't that going to merge together, Bob? And then you can't flatten that? <laughs> Inside of SOLIDWORKS, it would. Because it, it realizes when you do features, it wants to merge to its, its neighbor, right? Here, it realizes that's sheet metal. Sheet metal can touch. So by hitting the green check here, it's going to allow that to come in contact, perfect, zero thickness touching, and still be separate faces. 
So if if I zoom out here and I ask it to flatten, just hit that flatten button right there, it is not going to error. It's going to do what it's supposed to do, which is kind of nice. So no more doing the 0 0.000 offset from a face to make sure you get it close enough that you can manufacture it, but close enough that it looks like it's perfect. So here you can just do them perfectly touching. So I can which, model my cardboard boxes now and have the flaps look right. Yes. And that goes back to yesterday was Amazon Prime Day. <laughs> yeah. Make make lots of cardboard boxes. So <laughs> let's go ahead and add some corners on this guy. So we'll do some sheet metal chamfers. I'm going to go ahead and box select around that one and that one. That seems a little big. We'll take that down to like 75. So just like in SOLIDWORKS, you can come in and do a, a distance and a distance or an angle and a distance. So it's kind of nice to be able to do that. Here, we'll go in and we'll create a sketch right here on this flat face. And let's, let's look at that from the other side here. Yeah, I just want to look at that. Don't want to look at the components. And we'll put in a center line here. And also grab a slot. That looks pretty decent. Remember, doing this all inside of a web browser, there's nothing being installed locally. So here on the slot, I want to make that a little smaller. Just by clicking on it, I can type in the number, it puts in the dimension. So here, let's go ahead and make that 200. And we'll click on that and we'll say, give me, let's go with 100 offset. By clicking on that, get the context sensitive toolbar. We'll make that in construction because I don't need that to be cut. And go over to my sheet metal command or just click on the line. And let's see what else I got here. Nope, not what I want. So I will say, let's go ahead and execute a cutout. Now, here, I can come in and say, let's do a standard cutout, which would do a length to thickness on sheet metal, or I can do a pocket. So the pocket will allow me to have a thickness that is not all the way through or at, an, or at a non um, 90 degree angle. So that's, that's what th those two are for. So we'll go ahead and put that right in there. And we'll do a quick little pattern of this. I do like some of the things they did with the pattern. Here, let's go ahead and show that sketch. So it's asking me, what am I gonna pattern? Am I gonna pattern a feature or a body? And what am I gonna pattern? So I'm going to pattern that piece of geometry, and then I'm gonna use this line as my direction. So just like we would do inside of SOLIDWORKS, we can have instances and spacing, instances and length, space and length, which are kind of nice. And then I can say, let's do, let's do with five of those. But sometimes we forget that there should have been one up here. Well, we could do a second direction and add the second direction in. But we now have the option here to do a shift with the pattern. I like this one because basically you're telling it, where does where is the seed in the pattern? Is it number two? Is it number three? So I can shift the pattern backwards and forwards without doing bi-directional um, patterns, which I, I, I'd like for that one to be inside of SOLIDWORKS, honestly. So I don't know what you think about that, Randy. I agree, for sure. So, okay. So let's, let's double check this here. Let's go in and we'll flatten this out. Not sure how I feel about this here. So let's go ahead and do a little work with the, the flat pattern here. I'm going to go in and do a, a corner relief. So pick those corner reliefs. So I'm just picking the bends that create that. Go ahead and grab a hold of that one. So here, you can see I can do a circular relief, a square, or a stretched, and how big you want that to be. I'll go ahead and say add that one in. And then we'll do a second one with this face here.
or I can do a select all, which is kind of nice. And it found everything that should have a corner relief and put it in for me. So now if I do the flatten, you see I have a perfect round in that corner. And I did that without having to go in, flatten the sheet metal out, do the Mickey Mouse cutting on that, that intersection. It just did it for me in the, the bent state, which is kind of nice. And found the other corner too. Yes, yes. So it collects all those for me. So here, we'll come in and go ahead and do a mirror on that. So I can either pick a face or a plane, and I'm going to mirror the whole body. Just by doing that, it knows the body. And hit OK, merge that together. And now we've got our component here. Looks pretty good. At that point, I can then come in and say, what do I need to do with this part? I can send it to a 3D printer. In this situation, it's metal, so I'm not going to 3D print it. I can send it over for fabrication. So I could send this over in a format for Delmia or other tools of the platform to burn that part out. Or if I need to send it off to somebody, I can say, save it out as a DXF file. So the, the first iteration of this tool did not have have that in there, which made me kind of irked, but now they've added that one in, it makes it very useful to have. So, and just like everything else, I can come in here and say, right inside the tool, do I need to change maturity? Do I add a revision? Do I branch it? All that can happen right here while I'm inside the tool. So, no, hey, there was a question. Uh, if you if you got a second, there was a question on the yeah. uh, relief, the relief yes. ratio. Can you go back into your settings there and take a look at the options you have on the relief? Sure, no problem. Uh, not that relief. The um, at the beginning of the part, the uh, oh, okay, automatic reliefs where the plan just kick in on the sides. Yep. So the sheet metal parameters here. Yes. There so so what was the question? Um, they wanted to know if you can set the relief as a ratio to the thickness like you can in SOLIDWORKS. Um, does it always have to be a number? I think it's a number in this scenario. Yeah. Okay. Um, it's, I believe, um, talking to a couple of people, I think that's on the enhancement list. Um, maybe FDO3, which will be coming out in December. So yep. that that that's something people ha have been asking for when they did the lighthouse testing. So, but I can definitely look that one up. So anything else? Cool. That's good. Nope. Okay. Let's see here. Now, a few other things they just added in, which I haven't really had much of a chance to play with. They now have convert to sheet metal. So you can come in and grab components and um, insert bends and that sort of thing, which are kind of nice. We have that inside of SOLIDWORKS. Um, and now we have the ability to add um, stampings. So those half rounds, perfs, um, edge edge lances, those sort of things can be added in. Forming tools. Yeah. Yep. Right. So, so yeah, the, so, main, the main target for this, Bob, right, is uh, straight break, press break sheet metal, right? Yes. Um, yeah, we're not we're not talking about deep draws or things that would require an actual engine like Pam stamp to to figure out what the the stretching and elongation of the metal are. Um, that's that's not what this right. focus is. Um, yep. There's other, other tools out there that do that sort of thing. And so. like you said, you might you know you, a lot of these people might have seats of SolidWorks. Obviously, they're going to use the sheet metal that's in SolidWorks, but. If you've got the guy out on the shop floor that just needs to model up a part every once in a while and you, he doesn't need to learn the whole seat of SOLIDWORKS so you don't have an extra seat to spare to him, this is an awesome alternative. Uh, runs right on the on the web browser, doesn't need an awesome machine that he would need for a seat of SOLIDWORKS and only needs to learn how to use this tool. Yeah. So I've, I've definitely done some situations where uh, Someone will call me up and say, I need to get something done really quick. And all I have is my cell phone with me. Yeah. And I mean, 
I know it sounds weird, but nowadays I can just, I usually have an adapter with my phone that turns, turns the USB-C connector into a normal USB connector. I can plug a mouse into it and I've been able to do X shape, X design, X sheet metal from a pixel, a Google pixel phone. So, I mean, it definitely doesn't need mega horsepower to get the job done. Yep. I agree. So. So any other questions coming over? So something from um, Tim Guest. Yeah. Uh, help with bending instructions. So making step-by-step uh, -step instructions for what order to bend things in. Do you know if there's any uh, process to bends. with that? Um, I know we have we have some ways to do that inside of SolidWorks. Um, is there any cool tools in here for that? Um, not quite yet. Um, they are working on being able to use the drafter application with this. So you can import um, drafter. I mean, you can import this into drafter. Yeah. Um, you'd be able to do unfoldings of individual bends. So if I picked a, a face here, like that, then you can pick the bend face just like I would inside of a sawhorse and say unfold it. Yeah, one at a time. Right? Yep. So here it's doing a complete unfolding. It's gathering all the information. But um, I should have gone in and selected the individual ones. Yeah, it'd be cool if uh, if we could do something, if they'd add something so that in 3D play, you could have instructions for order to fold these or something like that. That'd yep. be nice. It's definitely something they're working on. Um, this tool is really new in the fact that it's it's been out since July. So um, I, I wouldn't consider it to be a use it application until just about a month ago. But now that we've got some some decent functionality here with some of the the convert to sheet metal with the stamping the forming tools and the DXF export, which was a pretty big deal, um, having those tools in there are really nice. Um, one of the nice things about this is rolls can be purchased not only yearly; they can be purchased uh, quarterly. So if this is something, you know, I, I like Merle out on the shop floor to, to try this for a few weeks, you can buy it for a quarter and have, have somebody try it out and be able to do some, some sheet metal work here and there and then be able to pull it back down to SOLIDWORKS to see what you think. Yep, that's great. So, so we, we got any more questions coming across or? Should we finish this no, up? That's all. That's good. Go ahead. Okay. Like I said, my name's Bob McGoy. Um, with me is Randy Simmons. If you guys have any questions about X Sheet Metal, X Design, any of the apps and roles that are available on the 3D Experience platform, um, feel free to shoot us shoot us an email. But we'd like to thank you for spending some time with us this afternoon. Hopefully you learned some stuff, understood what roles were on the platform, some of the things that are available, got some exposure to 3D sheet metal, and let us know. If you want to try it out, we'll, we'll make it happen for you. Thanks, okay. everybody. Have a great afternoon.